everybody. Uh, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but I said I was going to do a series on Robert's Rules, and this is video number two in the series. So if you watched the first video and you've been waiting for the second one, here it is. If you haven't watched the first video, I recommend going back and watching that first so that you can get the baseline for everything you need to know for this video. In this video, we'll be going over what officers need to know. So if you're involved in a club or a committee, there are usually officers or people who run the meetings or people in charge of the organization. And these are the things that you'll need to know if you're that person, or they're just good to know, even if you're just a part of the group in general, so that you can help keep things on track and know each individual role as they pertain to the group. So first, we're gonna go over some tips on running a meeting effectively. If you're in charge of running the meetings, you wanna make sure that business is handled effectively because that's basically the entire point of Robert's Rules is to keep everybody on track, on the task at hand, discussing only the important factors, leaving opinions out of it, and this is how you do it. So first and foremost, you wanna be on time and start on time. This is important because you want to make sure that you value everybody's time and commitment to whatever it is you're coming together to discuss. And so being on time is really important so that you can get everybody in and out in a timely manner and on to the next thing. You also want to be organized. You want to make sure that you have your agenda figured out ahead of time and that you stick to the agenda while you're in the meeting. You don't want people going off task and talking about things that don't have anything to do with your agenda. Otherwise, you'll be there all day because we all know that, you know, when people come together to discuss things, it's easy to get distracted and get on other things, which is wonderful when you're just getting together with some friends and having a conversation. But when you're there to handle important business, you wanna make sure that business gets done. And like we said before, honor everybody's time. So sticking to the agenda is key. You also wanna be prepared. You wanna know the rules and procedures for your group. Now each group is different. There are bylaws for each organization that you're gonna to have to adhere to. Those are things that you agree on ahead of time in the organizing of your group that everybody agrees to as your mission and why you're there. And so knowing those procedures ahead of time allows you to handle your business when you come together in your committees. If you're an officer, you also want to be a teacher. Not everybody is going to know the rules and procedures the way that you do, because as we discussed, that's your job as an officer. You're the one that everybody's looking to. And while it'd be easy to maybe get an ego about that, it's your job to take the ego out of it and to be a teacher to the other people in your group. And so you want to know the procedures like the back of your hand so that if somebody else is having trouble with it, you can explain it to them. This is also important so that you can clarify motions on the floor or rephrase motions that somebody may have made that wasn't clear to the rest of the group. You can rephrase those and make them easily understandable for everybody else. You also wanna make sure that you are in control of the floor. And by this, I mean, you don't wanna lose the main discussion to opinions and motions that are out of order or interruptions even. You want to make sure that your people stay on task and handle the business that you're there to handle. So you can do this by calling point of order, by knowing the procedures, by running your meeting in a timely manner, by having the appointed officers that you need to have to back you up, like a sergeant at arms and just generally maintain the respect of the group. Part of earning that respect is being impartial. You don't wanna show favoritism to one side or the other of any argument or motion. So if you're arguing for or against a crosswalk being added to your community, you don't wanna just address the motions of the people who want the crosswalk. You wanna make sure that everyone in the room has the opportunity to speak on either side of the issue so that they can have a greater understanding of what all of the issue entails. 
You also want to be precise. It's important to always restate a motion before a vote is taken so that everybody knows what you're voting on and what the wording means. So what's really helpful in those situations is when the chairperson restates the motion clearly right before you take the vote and explains everything in a concise manner so that everybody can vote accordingly. You also want to be focused. You want to focus the conversations on the floor to the motions that are being brought up or the items on the agenda. You don't want to hear about everybody's grandkids or how this one time back at college so-and-so did this. You're not here to have casual conversations. Robert's rules are brought in for a reason. So you want to make sure as an officer, as the chairperson, you keep the conversation focused. You also want to be temperate. Chances are when you're the chairperson or the president of an organization, you will be given a gavel. This is not <laughs> to slam on the table whenever you feel like it or you're having an emotional moment or anything like that. The gavel is placed in your care to be used once to open the meeting and once to close the meeting. If things really get out of hand and really passionate, which I have seen, I have seen people get up out of their chairs and get very angry during meetings that have really high stakes issues at hand, which, you know, you have to be prepared for that. And if you have to use the gavel, then that's acceptable, but it really should be used sparingly and hopefully only to open and close the meeting. As an officer, it's also your job to prepare an agenda. Now we talked about this a little bit earlier. So when you're preparing an agenda, it's basically just an outline of your meeting and the order that things are going to progress in. So you usually open with officer's reports. And when you're doing these officer's reports, you only wanna include the officers that you know have reports to give. You don't want to just list everyone you have if you know ahead of time that they have nothing to offer because then your minutes will just be filled with no report, no report, no report. And if there are any guests that have joined your meeting, they're really going to be looking around going, well, if they don't have anything to report on, then what are they doing? And you'll look like an organization that doesn't get anything done. So overall, it's just best to contact your officers and committee heads ahead of time and ask them if they'll be providing a report at the agenda. And at that point, you can add them to the list. After the officers give reports, then it progresses down through issues that you want to discuss or resolutions that people want to bring that pertain to those issues. And you usually wrap up with what's called for good of the order. And that's a chance for people to just share things that are going on a little more personally in their lives, maybe, or going on in the community or around the periphery of what your organization does, just as a way of like sharing, you know, positive, uplifting things. Because a lot of times the organization uh, business isn't isn't going to be super lighthearted, you know? I mean, it, it depends on the organization, but generally it's more business-minded items. So that's not, <laughs> that's not exactly going to leave you on a good tone all the time. So ending the meeting with for good of the order gives you a chance to do that. And it kind of reminds you why you all came together to do this work to begin with. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. Again, I'm using this book, Robert's Rules in Plain English. Highly recommend it. It's a short read. It has a lot of great information in there um, beyond just what I'm giving you here. So uh, if you wanna read it on your own, I highly recommend it. You will definitely use it in many aspects of your life. It's, it's handy information and I hope you guys learned a little something today and stay tuned for the next one. Like I said, it will not take me a year to make the next one, promise. Uh, be sure to watch the first video if you haven't yet and check out the other videos here on my page and I will talk to you guys again soon.